Today we will try to understand why a Bible from 1775 offered a different view of time than the one we commonly accept today. Welcome to this journey through time on Awaken Awareness. The 1775 Bible, a remarkable historical artifact, hints at a different approach to timekeeping. Curiously, it indicates March as the year's commencement and Sunday as the week's start. This discovery, uncovered through a late-night digital exploration, led me down a captivating path. The content, intriguingly, suggested a 13-month year, deviating from our familiar calendar. This revelation sparked a flurry of questions. Why the shift from this ancient system? What drove the realignment of months and weeks? I was drawn to the idea that our current temporal structure might be misaligned with historical and celestial patterns. The implications for holidays like Christmas, traditionally associated with pagan celebrations, were particularly striking. Under this old calendar, December 25th might not align with the winter solstice as neatly. This raised the possibility that our celebrations could be out of sync with their original intent. Moreover, this alternate calendar brought into question the astrological implications. Each day, traditionally tied to a celestial body, might be misaligned, potentially disrupting the flow of cosmic energies. Such a discrepancy calls for a reassessment of both religious customs and astrological practices. Delving deeper, I considered the motivations behind the calendar's alteration. Was it a gradual shift influenced by changing religious and secular powers, or a deliberate move to distance from ancient traditions? This exploration wasn't just about calendar facts, it was about reconnecting with a cosmic order that might predate our current system. The 1775 Bible's calendar, with its March start and 13 months, hints at a time more attuned to natural and cosmic rhythms. This perspective aligns with how ancient civilizations, like those who built Stonehenge, closely observed celestial movements. The vernal equinox in March, symbolizing renewal and a 13-month lunar-based system, reflect a deeper connection with nature's cycles. Each day's correspondence to a classical planet underscores the enduring legacy of celestial considerations. The prominence of Sunday in this system resonates with the Sun's central role in our solar system. This journey through the 1775 Bible's calendar isn't merely academic. It's about rediscovering a timekeeping system that honored cosmic energy and influenced societal norms, religious practices, and general worldviews. Understanding the blend of pagan traditions with Christian holidays like Christmas, requires a historical perspective. The Church's adoption of December 25th, coinciding with Roman and pagan solstice celebrations, might have been strategic for easing pagan converts into Christianity. However, this choice raises questions about the true date of Jesus' birth, with historical clues suggesting a springtime birth. This exploration into the 1775 Bible's calendar has the potential to profoundly impact our understanding of time, spirituality, and our place in the cosmos. It invites under a return to a more authentic, nature-aligned way of life, possibly uncovering lost insights into how our ancestors viewed and celebrated time and cosmic energy. In the intriguing calendar of a 1775 Bible, which introduces a 13-month year starting in March, we find a compelling invitation to re-examine historical and spiritual narratives, particularly the birth of Jesus. If this ancient calendar is a more accurate yardstick, could the nativity have actually occurred in spring? This proposition isn't just a minor date adjustment, it suggests a profound rethinking of the astrological and spiritual symbols intertwined with Jesus' birth. Spring, marked by the vernal equinox, is a period of awakening and rebirth, aligning with the biblical account of shepherds tending their flocks.
a detail supporting a springtime birth narrative. If Jesus was indeed born in spring, the connection with Aries in astrology becomes fascinating. Aries, starting in late March, is often associated with leadership and new beginnings, potentially positioning Jesus as a herald of a new era, in sync with the ram symbol, often linked to sacrifice and initiation in various mythologies. The spring equinox, a time of equilibrium between day and night, might symbolize Jesus' dual nature as both human and divine. This natural balance could offer a potent allegory for the spiritual harmony he represents. This reimagining of the nativity to spring could also reshape the spiritual interpretation of biblical texts. The metaphor of light entering the world would gain a literal dimension as days lengthen and winter's darkness recedes, aligning naturally with the myths of rebirth and resurrection central to Christian doctrine. Easter's implications, closely tied to the Jewish Passover, become significant under this perspective. Rather than a wandering date in the Gregorian calendar, a springtime Christmas would lead directly into Easter, tightening the link between Jesus' birth and resurrection within the cycle of natural and spiritual renewal. This hypothesis of a springtime nativity invites believers and historians to reflect on the interplay between celestial cycles and sacred events. It nudges us to contemplate how celestial events have historically shaped our spiritual traditions and might continue to do so if viewed through a calendar more closely mirroring the cosmos. The Julian calendar initiated by Julius Caesar in 45 BCE, marked a significant shift in timekeeping, moving from a lunar to a solar basis, extending the year to 365 days. This shift, while bringing practicality for managing societal functions, may have sidelined a 13-month calendar more aligned with natural cycles. The reasons for abandoning this calendar were multifaceted, influenced by political and practical necessities. The omission of the 13th month might represent a disconnect from a time when the night ski was a vital part of daily life. Historical records on this transition are patchy, suggesting that church and secular authorities might have intentionally moved away from lunar calendars to diminish pagan traditions closely linked to moon phases. The exclusion of the 13th month, perhaps influenced by superstitions around the number 13 or its association with women's menstrual cycles, might have been a strategic move. If a 13-month calendar did indeed reflect a more accurate cosmic rhythm, its abandonment raises significant questions. Our modern calendar, misaligned with the lunar cycle, could contribute to a societal disconnection from natural patterns, impacting agriculture, mental health and spirituality. Religious festivals, once synchronized with celestial events, now drift through the year, potentially detached from their original seasonal significance. This misalignment might have profound implications. Agricultural practices, once timed to lunar rhythms, now depend on an imperfect Gregorian calendar, possibly leading to less sustainable and harmonious environmental practices. In spiritual terms, the impact is more esoteric. If sacred days are incorrectly dated, the collective energy channeled during these times might not align with their intended spiritual significance. This isn't a question of faith or devotion, but a contemplation of collective consciousness and its alignment with the timing of sacred observances. If you enjoyed today's journey, consider watching the video you'll find at the end, a video that tries to take an even different view of time. Thanks for getting this far. See you soon from Awaken Awareness.